Now last year we had a young fella who was just getting into archery. He had him a Genesis bow. He was shooting real good, learned how to use that. He wasn't quite ready for the big time, but this year he's grown about three feet. It's Rick Hill's son. He wants to go bow hunting, and guess what? I think he's ready. We're at Sportsman's Warehouse in Lexington. This is Clinton Hill, and this is Travis. And Clinton is going to bow hunt this year. Now, Travis, if you will, talk about what you have to do to set up a bow for an individual. You just don't want to go buy a bow off the rack and know nothing about it. You got your draw length, you got your draw weight. Now, you know, you're going to have to outfit the bow with your accessories, you know, meaning the rest, the sights, uh, peep sight if you want a peep sight, and then some kind of a knocking point. Would you recommend a release to a first time shooter? Well, me myself, I believe so, just because it's going to be a little bit easier for them to you know, learn and plus, you know, you're not going to have the sore fingers. I'd say an advantage of buying a bow and then putting your own accessories on it is, you know, first and foremost, you know, you get to add a personal touch to your bow. You get to decide what you want on it. Like say some bows, they come in a kit, you know, they might just come with a whisker biscuit. Well, you might want a drop away, you know. It just, it pretty much it all boils down to personal preference, what you like the most and by buying just a plain Jane bow and building upon it yourself, you know, that gives you that, that option. You know, you want to match your bullet to your gun just the same as you want to match your arrow to your bow. You just pull it back, hold it, and let me uh, put a mark on there so we'll know how far to... All right, you ready? You comfortable? And uh, we'll measure and cut the arrow, you know, to the bow. All right, just ease it back down. There you go. You know, there's a, there's a great reason to use a resource like this because this guy has everything. He's got all the equipment to work on these things. He does it for a living. He does it every day. He sets these things up, and he's paid to do it and do it well. So that would be my suggestion to somebody out there. You may try to set up yourself, but if you, if you a guy like Travis who's paid to do it, does it every day, you got a huge advantage. You're going to get it done right. Travis, you think he's ready? You think he's up for it? I say we should go. Try it out on it. All right, let's go that way. Carbon arrows are either going to be shootable or not shootable. With aluminum, you can get a little dent, you know, it's going to cause it to warp, you know, get bad, you know, an erratic arrow flight. You know, a bow of this caliber pulling only 40 to 50 pounds, maybe going, you know, with a fixed blade cut on contact. They're making fixed blade broadheads with smaller blades, you know, to fly more like a field point, which is, you know, the ultimate goal. Now you're getting tired. You can tell when I'm shooting my, a new bow, I start doing a little bit of this, and that's time to stop because you want to de develop some bad habits. But Travis has done a wonderful job getting you set up here. Thank you very much, buddy. I appreciate it. And now let's uh, start thinking about heading towards the woods. All righty. Clinton has been to the range, he's got his bow set up. Now, we're going to the woods and we're getting him ready because it's almost here. Hey, you guys, you need to get that bow out and get it ready too. Now that we're in the woods, and this young man has been in the woods, he grew up in the country, you know what it's all about. You've shot a deer with a gun, right? Yeah. You're about to graduate because you're climbing up in a tree stand. You're shooting at an angle. Now, have you ever done that? Nope. That's a whole different story, and it's something you need to practice. For those of you out there who have never shot out of a deer stand, it's really important. Make sure you get up there and practice at that angle. You don't want to get excited and shoot beyond your capability. Know your yardage. Now, you're just starting. You've got about a 40-some pound bow. You don't want to get past 20 yards. Know exactly where 20 yards is at all times around your stand. Then. When that deer comes in, you're on it. You're going to have venison on your table. If you have a radio on you, you got your safety strap on, you got your broadheads all tuned in, you've been shooting, practicing, now it's time to go up the stand because you know exactly where 20 yards is. As soon as you get up there, I showed you how this works. This right here, put screw that little thing around it, and you are, if you fall, you won't go far. comfortable with that height? Make you nervous? A little bit? 
I don't know. It's, it's not bad to have a little bit of nervousness. Respect that height. Now Clinton is in a deer stand that he's never been in. A lot of people think they can put a stand up and climb in it and hunt. And we're finding out, I've seen this a million times, you have to find a comfort zone. You have to be able to get comfortable. You have to find a way to lean your leg here or your leg there to where you can get a comfortable shooting stance. That's why it's so important once you get in a tree stand to find your comfort zone and figure out how you're going to shoot a deer. Here comes a 10 point deer or even a doe. Your heart's going to be going boom, 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 boom. So if you spend a lot of time up there, a lot of time shooting, a lot of time getting ready, you're going to have all those bugs worked out and you're not going to wound that deer. When you get up in a tree stand, it's pretty, it's pretty scary looking down at the ground. Now imagine all the elements you have to put together to have a successful bow hunt. You might be sitting down, you might get in an odd position. So you have to anticipate where that deer might be coming from and then try to take that shot in whatever posture you might have. That's why it's so important. So once you establish where your deer stand is going to be way before the season, and get up there and get comfortable. Your form's looking real good up there. You have done well. Now you see how it is when you get up and stand, see how everything changes? But you did well. You hit the target and you adjusted for it. When you get out in the woods, I want you to practice every different angle. Shoot on your knee, shoot it when you're leaning. You're smooth, you're quiet, you take your shot. It's within 20 yards, you know where your 20 yards is, and guess what? 